Yay. we're back, Woo. you guys, for another week of building these nano aquariums. And another Cube 10 is being given away today. So someone yes. watching is going to win a Cube 10, which is always exciting. Yes, stick around for that. Like, share, subscribe, <laughs> and set up the notifications here on YouTube. Yes, and this is exciting week. We're adding some um, fish and corals to these and got a great couple of announcements about the giveaway. We get started shortly. Yeah, we'll be right back. We're back. Welcome back. All right. So we have a actual someone a sponsor for this week's show. Yeah, we have a little surprise for you guys. We uh, we are adding on to the grand prize. Yes. So it's getting even better. Yeah. Um, our sponsor for this week's uh, show is Live Aquaria. They are the ones that send us the fish and the coral, mm -hmm. and they've also been extremely generous in adding to the grand prize. Yeah. So we'll we'll give you guys some details here. Uh, on the grand prize. Um, Keena, can you pull that slide? So here you go. Not only are we giving away the Cube 10 Plus Edition, but Live Aquaria was so generous to throw in a $50 gift card mm -hmm. to their store. So yeah, yeah. you're going to see a lot of the stuff that came from them going into these tanks today. We're also giving you the two filter socks, the Reef T-shirt, and they're throwing in the 53-gallon mix of the Live Aquaria Professional Reef Salt, which is great stuff. You'll have water for quite a while on your yeah. Cube 10. You've got yeah. to dig out the salt mix, a gift card to start shopping. Um, it's a great addition. We really appreciate them doing yeah, that's that good. for us. So, yeah. and We should but, also mention that they, we also have a promo code for them as well. Oh, well, yeah. That's a pretty big one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Live Aquaria this week. <laughs> yeah. um, so they are offering a 10% discount with this code, which goes through till tomorrow night. Yep. So there you go, guys. Go. LA save 10, 10% off, good till tomorrow night. So if you've already got a tank, you already got a water box, go take advantage of that code. We'll post that up here again towards the end of the uh, episode so you guys can remember it. Uh, but take advantage of that, that's a big deal. Yeah, so we've, we've used Live Aquaria for quite a bit of mm -hmm. um, some of our builds and stuff. Eel Island, we use them for fish and corals and um, they really have a great selection, very healthy livestock. Yeah. Um, they truly do like, you know, quarantine them, evaluate them, and they condition mm -hmm. them before they put them up for sale. They've got divers den, which is actually see what you see is what you get. Yep. Fish, corals, you know, some really nice rare stuff. Um, they're probably one of the biggest online yeah, biggest retailers online of retailers. fish yeah. and corals and stuff like I that. I have so. personally shopped with Live Aquaria. I mean, for as long, long as they th that I've known about them, um, they're really unique in the aspect that they have a divers den. These are fish that they pick out and they quarantine them right there in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's top notch stuff. Check them out, take advantage of that coupon code if you already got an established tank. And we're lucky enough to have some stuff from them for this week. Uh, so we are on week three of our Q10 builds. And last week we uh, added some inverts, talked about testing, cycling, and bacteria. Mm -hmm. And now these aquariums are ready for like the first fish and first coral. Um, but you do have to be selective and you right. have to be kind of careful what you choose to add, um, you know, how much you're adding, especially if this is your first tank ever. Yeah. So you don't want to be adding anything that's real sensitive or, um, you know, gets too big or is going to, you know, be aggressive into especially a nano type of aquarium. Right. And start out slow, you know, don't, don't be adding things too fast to your aquariums. I, I'm going to say it again. Uh, no good things happen really fast in a saltwater aquarium. So you want to take your time. If you want to wait a little bit longer than we did to put fish and corals in, mm -hmm. by all means do. Test your water. Play it safe. Yeah, so we may go a little bit faster, add a little bit more stuff as mm -hmm. we are doing this, just to kind of wrap this up in our four weeks. Um, and we've also been doing this for quite a long time. But this is just a good example of some beginner fish and corals to kind of get your feet wet, or this is your first time getting livestock into the aquariums. Um, great thing about Live Aquaria is they've got categories that are nano fish, beginner mm -hmm. fish, yep. um, you know, favorites, you know, stuff like that. So you can see kind of a good starting go. It'll tell you, or is it hardy? Is it aggressive? What size tank it should be in? Um, yep. So it gives a lot of information. They even have a, just, they even have a 
compatibility chart. Yeah. So if you want, they've gone into major detail with these things. So you can, on their website, you can find compatibility. You can say, I want to keep a clownfish and a goby, and you can go down the chart and you connect them together and they'll say whether or not they're compatible or That's not, awesome. which is really yeah. cool. Um, like she said, there's they tell you what gallon range aquarium is mm -hmm. ideal for them. Whether what their they're, diet is, mm -hmm. water conditions, you know, kind of all the things you need to know all in one spot um, with great healthy livestock selection. Yeah. So top notch. We're going to start off with what we're adding to our tanks today. So we're kind of going slightly different theme um, on each of ours, but first we should start with our fish. The fish. Fish. Yeah. I'll let you go first. Oh, I'm going to go first. Okay. Yeah, I went first with the, uh, <laughs> I think with All the right. aquascaping. Um, so for fish, I did um, a Bangai Cardinal was my first choice. Classic. Um, yes. And this is a little aquacultured one, which is awesome. And he's, you know, small, which is great for a nano. They do eventually get a little bit bigger. So you guys, I, I want to reiterate that these are aquacultured. So this is a great way when you're getting into the aquarium it. hobby the saltwater aquarium hobby try to find things that are aquacultured because yeah. it's great for the sustainability um they're relatively adapted to you know aquarium mm -hmm. life per se so and we have been um acclimating the fish and the corals and everything um for the last like 45 minutes here before the yep. show so they are ready to go in now there's a little baby bang guy. Um, <laughs> they're adorable. They're funky. They have huge eyes, cool spots. Um, yeah. They're kind of like, I think everyone's probably had one if you've had an aquarium, um, but I've always loved them. So uh, that was Great my first beginner choice. beginner fish, aquaculture, mm -hmm. solid choice. And they're pretty peaceful, really kind of funky looking. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my second choice that I put in is actually a bicolor blenny because blennies have such a cute personality um, and they're great for kind of just they're jumping so around fun. the rocks and they're adorable. See, this guy wants to show himself. There's a close-up photo of it. I mean, look how pretty that thing is. Sorry, I switched back if you were going to talk. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I love He's this fish. He's probably going to go run and hide, but... Show him again. Yeah, so let's pull that up again. Ah. If you love that fish, say you love that fish. I love, I love all <laughs> the little, the yeah, all the little bunnies, tail spots, eye colors. Um, they're really hardy. It looks like a cartoon cute. character. Yeah, and <laughs> once they get used to you, I mean, they'll really just kind of just perch there and stare at you. They'll come say hi. Um, a great personality for a little tiny fish, so... Those are my two choices for this nano. It's really two fish is only one is all that's going to go into here. Um, so they've gone at the same time, and they should be buddies. The bang guy's already out doing his thing, and Rich has chosen two fish. What is your first one? My first fish is what's called a court jester goby. Ooh, these are super cool. I'm not going to be sure if you're going to be able to see him. There he is. He's hanging Aww. up front. There he, there he is. is right there. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see him. He's pretty paled out right now, um, just to get settled in. But yeah, yeah these are pretty cool. Um, he is in the goby family, and actually will sift a little bit of sand, stays small, um, really cool pattern and, and color to him. So gobies and blennies are like always a winning choice for a smaller tank. I now love here's them. everybody's favorite, a lot of people's favorite, but this is a little bit of a twist on your traditional clownfish. So we have here a, this is a snowflake clown, right? Yes. So this is a snowflake clownfish. Um, this is captive bred, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, this is a great little starter fish. There you go. Look how cool that is. Yeah, so cool thing with clownfish is a lot of times if you've never gotten into this or it's your first tank, you only really know of Nemo, which is like a regular ocellaris. Mm -hmm. It's orange and white, regular stripes. Um, but there are probably a hundred different varieties out there now from ones that are all black, all white, all orange different patterns like yeah. this, um, long fins, you know, all kinds of different stuff. So you have a lot of variety and they're considered like your designer type clowns are all aquacultured yeah. to have that color trait or pattern trait. It's really cool with the variety that you can get. Um, and they're all going and to they're all, they're all hiding. hiding on us, which is why we've had pictures <laughs> of what the fish looks like because they never are gonna just This is say. great though, because you guys, when you first put your fish in your tank, you, you don't expect them to just come out and play and show themselves right off the bat. It's yeah. going to take a little while mm -hmm. for them to get adjusted, to get used to, you know, being in their new home. So Once they want... realize that you were the source of food, yes, then exactly. they become your best friends. Yeah. Uh, they got to trust you and they got to feed them for that. So yeah. um, those two guys later today or tomorrow, they'll be out and about a little bit more active. Um, and like I said, those two fish are good for both of our tanks. Pretty much yep. set there. 
um, pick peaceful smaller varieties that work yeah, well. Yeah, especially in these hardy. 10 gallons where, you know, nutrient buildup can happen a lot faster. Try to go lighter on the fish, you know. Mm -hmm. It's gonna, in the long run, you're gonna thank yourself for doing that because, you know, you'll have less algae issues, you'll have less, you know, potential for like an ammonia spike or something like that. The so. smaller the tank, the more careful you've gotta be with stocking, overfeeding, yeah. and stuff like that. So, um, you know, take it easy, take it slow. And um, next one is we did pick out some corals. Yep, so me and Jess both have three corals that we're gonna put in today. Yes. All of them came from Live Aquaria. Again, check them out. Um, it's a great place to shop for corals. So I'm doing um, a zoantha tank, basically. So it's gonna be all zoos, which is why I went with kind of a taller, bigger rock structure, because they only coat onto the rock. So they don't have any height to them. They don't go into the water column. Um, so this is gonna be all the surface area that they get to grow onto. And I cannot tell what these look like because they are closed, but I'm gonna go ahead and just We've got a ton of people in here in. with us, Jess. We got and Bill, Scott, Gail, Matt, Judith. There's too many to read. <laughs> <laughs> now, most likely today, <clears throat> we will have no idea what these look like until they open a little bit more. And I'll probably end up kind of changing the spot that I put them in, but just to get them in, acclimated, and just see what they look like. So these were picked out by Live Aquaria for us. I'm gonna just kind of put them in. So zoos, whenever they're in, are just completely closed up, um, especially if they've been packed and traveled and mm -hmm. stuff like that, so. So zooanthids are a great choice for these nano aquariums because they don't mind nutrient levels as much. They, uh, they carpet and spread around. They're just, and they're, they're pretty easy to keep. They don't require too much light. Um, and they're super colorful. So. Yes, so tons of colors, super easy, grow yep. well. Um, I mean, this is a perfect beginner coral. Um, most of the stuff in the family, like soft coral, zoos, leathers, polyps, um, are all mushrooms, are all gonna be great starter corals. Um, and you can't really see much with them. I mean, we'll be able to show a little more yeah. uh, once they open or next week or it's whatever. It's gonna be a little boring for you guys right now, but next week when we come back, we're gonna- But do know be... that when you get new corals, they may not open for the first day or two. Mm -hmm. They're getting adjusted to your water quality, light, flow. Um, so it is perfectly normal. And you're like, oh, it's only three corals. You don't want to really do more than that in the beginning. Yeah. You know, give yeah. yourself spacing out each week. Take it slow. Um, if you have existing, I'm going to start putting mine in. If you guys have existing corals in your tank already, I mean, and you're buying from a trusted source, maybe you don't have to dip them, but you could maybe consider using a coral dip if you are putting them in with other corals just to prevent any pests. So what are you doing with your tank? So I'm going mostly like leathers, uh, some clove polyps, star polyps. Um, I love these. I love them because they're super, super easy to keep. Mm -hmm. Put this guy up pretty high. So you're going all soft corals, just so like more a, of a variety. This is a neon green finger leather. It's gonna be really cool when it opens up. So that's gonna expand and actually get taller and kind of fill up the water column in the top there, have a nice bright green color. And then of course, Jess, my favorite. The controversial. Star polyps, Aye. yay! Um, yeah, some people are gonna say this is the worst idea. Some people are like, I love my star polyps. You will get a mixed reaction on that one. You know what's funny is I would be perfectly content if this tank just got carpeted in star polyps. I can look at it all day long, I'm good. I think it also fits These the people are like, He's easy crazy. maintenance, don't have to do anything with it the theme of you as well. Um, Next thing is some clove polyps. Ah, I love clove polyps, those are very cool. So I'm just gonna stick him right here real easy. I'm not gluing them down or anything, so if we wanna move them later, it's easy to do. So there you go. All right. Like I said, hopefully maybe they'll start to open. If not, we'll do a sneak peek on them. You know, maybe once they do open, get some pictures up or whatever. But like I said, it's perfectly normal. You're gonna buy this coral, it's gonna look all big and on online or in the store. You get it in a bag, you take it home, you're like, oh my God. You know, what's wrong? It's not open, it's shrunk down. Um, perfectly normal. It's gonna take some time for them to open up, adjust, and get back to that full size. So, you know, don't worry about that. And we do have one little surprise um, for each of our tanks yeah. that we weren't planning on adding. Um, but it's like one of my personal favorites. They're kind of hard to find. I was able to find two little ones. Mm -hmm. So I was really excited to be able to do that. Hopefully we can get a good shot of this guy going Yeah, can here. you? Go Where in on. Well, I'm gonna hold it in my hand, like right up front. Okay. We got some shot. GSP lovers in here with us, Jess. All right. Let's see if we can 
Zoom in a little bit. Steven says GSP on the back wall would look cool. I see a lot of people that do that. Yeah. Let's see if we can get a cool picture. So I found two little Harlequin serpent stars. Now serpents can get pretty big and you wouldn't want to put a big one in this size tank. But look, oh, there he is. Oh yeah. Look at him. Yeah, Harlequins so are serpent really cool. starfish. Yeah, serpent, he's gonna be a scavenger, he's gonna clean up your tank. Um, but I was able to find some tiny little Harlequin one and I thought it would be a perfect addition Watch him climb up the rock. Perfect addition to our nanos. Um, yeah, and like you, it's just they're not as easy to find, and it's just awesome. I love I love inverse though. Get this guy into my tank too. Yeah. I'm having trouble getting a hold of him. Hi, right, everybody. We're gonna put one. So on. really cool starfish. Um, did these come from the keys? Yes. Do, 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 do. That guy running across the rock. So I was excited to find that. Kind of just tops it out for adding some cool stuff this week to our tanks. So we got a couple of questions about the starfish. They really like it. Uh -huh. one, one guy says, won't he eat the corals? No. So serpent starfish are not coral eaters. Um, yeah, they, they, <laughs> they'll, run off. they'll run off. <laughs> They're quick. They're very um, fast. So there's like chocolate chip starfish and some other ones that mm -hmm. do eat corals. Serpent stars are not coral eaters. They're scavengers. They're gonna feed on fish waste, um, fish food, anything like that around the tank. Um, so they're perfectly reef community safe. Mm -hmm. Now they, some of them do get pretty big. So I wouldn't go buy a, a full size one because sometimes their legs can like go out this long and put it in a tent. Yeah. Um, you know, it just would not be proper size. Um, but like a small one like this, it'll have time to grow up with the tank and they're just really cool. So you guys and have probably seen starfish before, whether it's in movies or whatever, or nature shows mm -hmm. and they move super slow across the bottom of the glass. Well, these things freaking run. Yes, yeah. So the short stubby leg ones are ones more likely they're going to eat corals. These long leg ones are the serpents. They're fast. Yeah, the big um, ones, it's and almost truly, like, borderline walk. creepy. Like they'll be like across the, if they're, you know, running for something or they're trying to get food yeah. or something like My that. My dude's actually hanging right out on the front. He's like, I'm here. It's cool. I don't know where yours <laughs> went. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're, they're perfectly safe. Do, do be cautious. Not all starfish that you come across in a store online are coral safe or fish safe. Um, so do your research before you add one to it if it is a different type. Yeah. And when you're buying these things, guys, definitely check out Live Aquaria as your resource. You, you click on any of these fish, any of these inverts, any of these animals that they're expecting you to care for. Yeah. They're going to give you all the details that you need. So check it out. So very exciting. I hope everyone likes our selection of corals and fish and stuff like that. Um, and we kind of have also talked about like, you know, especially if this is your first aquarium, you know, mm -hmm. what does it look like as far as like, what am I going to have to now do for this tank? Um, mm -hmm. Don't forget about the discount going on Live Aquaria until end of tomorrow. Um, LA Save 10, 10% off your order. The guys, this ends tomorrow night, so take advantage of this. Um, it's not often that you get an opportunity to save 10% on live Yeah, they're nice to do a promo for us and yeah. our viewers. Um, so yeah, we're talking about like, kind of like, what are your next step? You've put a few fish or fish and corals in here. Um, what are things to consider as far as your maintenance or possibly more equipment that you could add or want to add um, to a nano type of thing? Mm -hmm. And um, maintenance wise is, you know, we're going to start looking at a water change schedule. Um, yep. You know, you're going to be feeding now that you have fish in here. And, you know, next week we're going to dive a little bit more into those things. Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys didn't catch the first two episodes, definitely check those out. Um, we added coral and fish this week. Next week's maintenance. Maintenance, probably a few more corals or something going in here. Yeah. Because um, it's kind of a week by week step. But next week we're going to actually show the maintenance and upkeep, you know, changing media, water change, all that stuff on yep. these um, to show you how to do it. But like sometimes people are like, you know, they want to add more equipment or depending on the type of fish and corals and stuff you keep, you may want to do some stuff. So one thing a lot of people ask about for nanos is protein skimmers. Mm -hmm. So not a necessity, but it is a benefit. Anything that removes waste product for your aquarium is going to be good. Um, it's just a little bit harder to find protein skimmers for small tanks. It is, but they exist. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, it might take a little searching. There's a couple companies that have them, specifically ones, uh, Tunza or Tunzi, mm -hmm. as we call it here, 
Um, I don't know offhand if there's one that fits the 10. Is there a 10 gallon? I or? don't know. I know that the Tunze 9001 fits mm -hmm. the Cube 20, but I don't know about the Cube 10. Um, but there are some other small ones out there. I yeah. just don't, off the top of my head, know. That's why you guys got to hop in on our Facebook group and ask our users. There's about 7,000 of them in there that have sure that question answered. Has that, yes. There's <laughs> a question. has a question for us. Questions. Yeah. Can you put an uh, anemone in a cube 10? Um, okay, you can put an anemone in a cube 10, but don't expect to have much else in there because uh, most anemones either move around uh, quite a bit or they tend to get large. Um, so having other corals in there, you do risk that it's going to move or sting them. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times if you have an enemy, you have clownfish. And if clownfish has an enemy, he's going to be pretty protective of the area. So you really want to be able to keep other fish in there. Yeah. Um, so like I have a 10 cube in my office right now that's all just rose bubbles. And it's like seven of them in there. Yeah. And it's just filled the whole thing. And that's a great way to do it if you want an enemy. Yeah, just create a, uh, a themed tank or, you know, just something that's, you know, strictly bubble and enemies. Great. It's yeah. really cool. Another question? What wave maker do you recommend for the Cube 10? So that's another one of the equipment that um, you can add in here. I mean, my favorite is going to be for, for tanks in general is going to be the Nero, the Nero yeah. 5. Um, it can be a little bit big for the Cube 10, but it's adjustable down to like 1%. So you can right. really adjust the speed and it will grow with you. Um, there's a couple other nano type of um, power heads out there. You can definitely ask around on what people have used. Yeah. My first hand experience is just with the Nero. Um, yeah. so and it's controllable, which is great. Yeah, hop on our group. There's a lot of people using different things. One of the things she pointed out with the Nero that's really cool, like she said, it'll grow with you. So chances are you're going to start with a 10 or maybe you have another tank, but you're going to eventually move into maybe a 20 or a 50. It's pretty much impossible. And, <laughs> and that Nero is going to jump. That's going to work all the way up into our 130 gallon system. So yeah. Yeah, um, so it's a great purchase, and it's 199 bucks. Completely controllable. Yeah, hooks up to your uh, the same app that your lights are used, and it's really cool. That's a good one for that. And then another thing that we do recommend um, that's great to have for any size aquarium, um, but even so with the nanos, is an ATL. And we talked about that I think last week as well. Is you going to have evaporation happen and in a small body of water it's going to cause your salinity to fluctuate a lot more than in a big tank so topping off you know consistently you know one or two times a day or if you can't do that or you don't want the headache of doing it get an mm -hmm. ATO um, XB aqua is a great one it's simple you put a sensor here have a bucket somewhere and then it's going to top off the water for you and it's yeah. going to keep everything super consistent which is really important in a tank yeah absolutely top offs again I've said this before and previous episodes that's the number one thing I learned early that you need to stay on top of um, so invest in us in an auto top off if you can make sure if you don't have an RODI unit you're going to the store to buy water yes got another question can you put mangroves in the back of the tank yeah yeah you can do mangroves in there yeah, um, yeah we've I done guess it as long as you have general overhead lighting that would be proper for them um, the only thing I would be careful of is just if you put them in the back chambers as, as they got bigger and more roots that you're not blocking the flow. Right. Um, you know, if you have any sponges and roots and stuff back there, you don't want to clog up the back chambers, but it's definitely possible. It'd be pretty cool looking. Any other questions? I see a good one here. Would you recommend adding a glass lid to stop evaporation? I personally would say no. Uh, if you're going to put a lid on this, use like the D&D jump guard that's a mesh so that it can breathe. What's all that's going to happen with that glass lid is it's going to get covered in water and condensation, and it's going to have, it's going to restrict your light going through. They're just messy. Yeah. So whenever you have like a glass cover, um, like you said, you're actually going to trap heat. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to block light because of the condensation buildup. But also when you're like cutting off the airflow, your CO2 and oxygen exchange. Mm -hmm. um, does not occur uh, as well. And that's gonna cause your pH to get lower. Mm -hmm. um, you're not gonna have enough oxygen and stuff in your water. So definitely not recommended for glass tops, really in any aquariums anymore. Um, go with mesh, or at least if you're gonna do somewhat glass, like have some venting. Yeah, or check, check to out it. the, it's called the DD Jump Guard. Yeah, D D. It's, it's pretty easy. It's kind of like a DIY kit. You do some cutting, you make it the size of the tank, you're good to go. Yeah. How do I win the grand prize? 
great question, <laughs> Keenan. We should probably talk about the grand prize <laughs> yeah. and what it is and how you get to it. So I'm going to give that to you. <laughs> so guys, if you head over to our website, and Keenan, can you pull that up for us? So if you head over to our website, we have a page dedicated. There's a link right there up top in blue. If you're on the home page, you can scroll down the pages there as well. Um, so head over to this page. It's going to give you our entire guide of live episodes that we're doing. It's going to give you all the information you need. There's going to be a little sign-up form here in the uh, blue section. So put your email in, your name. Um, you're going to get one entry for that. You want multiple entries, it's going to ask you to visit our website, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube. Those are all going to get you multiple entries. And then a little bit further down, we added the live stock that we actually added. Yep, and we just updated this page today, like Keenan said. So you can even come in and check out the fish and corals uh, that we put in our tanks today. So that's pretty cool. It'll give you a, a nice little overview there. And uh, definitely head on over there if you haven't already get signed up. Yep. And we're also giving away a cube to the end of this episode. There is. So not only do you have get a chance for our final episode next week, but we have been giving away one every single week. And this week is no different. Yep. Um, and, and Jess does have the winner, so. All right. Are we doing it? Are we doing it? Are we doing it? We're ro Who is it? All right. The winner is Judith Soup. Judith Soup. Is she on YouTube? YouTube. Or? YouTube. Okay, so YouTube, Woo! Judith Soup. Congratulations. You just Congratulations. won yourself a cute 10. That's awesome. So do um, email support at waterboxaquarium.com. Let them know you are the winner. Um, they'll verify everything with you, and we'll get that cube 10 on its way to you. Yep. So w welcome, if you're not already a part, to the Waterbox family. Yeah. It's a growing family. We it have a lot of new people so joining fast. our group. Um, lots of new water box going out and mm -hmm. to, you know, new tank owners, repeat owners, um, just yeah. everybody. So we're, we're staying really busy. Tanks are moving. Um, and if you guys don't know, so... You Waterbox is in the U.S. We're also in Australia. We're in Asia. We are in Europe, all over Europe, the U.K. Uh, what am I missing? We're in Dubai, uh, UAE. Yeah. Um, also, exciting on. news is we actually do have a dealer who is now in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. So if so you're in Hawaii. So that is a place we, that we did not have the ability to really yeah. get tanks to. So we actually have a new dealer in Hawaii. So that's really exciting. A lot of people have always asked us who are from Hawaii how to get Waterbox. And now yeah. it's gotten a lot easier. So, so if you're in the U.S. or Canada, you can hop on waterboxaquariums.com to buy Waterbox. We also have there on the footer of the website, you can visit a web. We have a store locator. So you can find retail stores all over the U.S. or all over the world there as well. Yeah. If you're in Europe, go to waterboxaquariumseu.com. <laughs> 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 well, congratulations to Judith. Uh, we had really awesome that we got some now. We have some fish and corals and everything in our cubes here. Do we have any other questions or anything? Or uh, People are congratulating Judith Soup. They're saying, how did we pick today's winner? Um, I don't have the mic on. You can say it was at random today, but next week we pick who the soup stays. Yeah, so for as far as um, the sweet space go for next week, like we just random pick for these. The giveaway is done through the actual automated yeah, entry, so, right? So next week, the grand prize will be automatically picked by the software that we're using, um, and we'll draw it live at the end of that episode. So you got to stay tuned for that. And guys, when this series is over next week, we got some super cool stuff coming, so you got to stay tuned. Something really it's big It's not going. just the nano kill cube builds guys <laughs> it is uh we do this every wednesday at 6 p.m we've been doing it for now i don't know 180 episodes or something like that so wow. we're uh we're not Impressive. stopping yeah we're here we're here <laughs> yeah um and we'll be back next week with some more fun stuff going with these cubes and the grand prize winner yeah so thank you guys so much you're awesome tune in next week i'll see you then see you